as we gather to remember a very ordinary man who did the most extraordinary act of bravery, the war. I'd like to welcome you here today as we gather to remember a very ordinary man who did the most extraordinary act of bravery during the First World War, George Masters, BC. We gather for the unveiling and the blessing of a paving stone in his memory and to be inspired once again by his story of bravery, of courage and care for his fellow man. So let us pray. He's in motorsport and apparently I, I have the same large ears and moustache. I remember as a small boy in the late 50s being taken to visit relatives in Southport by my grandma. These trips stopped, I assumed, after Richard's death. There's only been in adult life, having developed an interest in all things historical, the scale of what the man did a hundred years ago hit home while researching him. Leslie Cheney, the lady I mentioned during our research, summed up her feeling about him, saying that she was very proud he won the VC for saving life, not taking it. And that regarding his personality, she said, if only Ceres learned to put our fears in our pocket, we could all perhaps achieve greater things, perhaps not now, however, to the degree Richard George accomplished. Finally, I leave you with this thought. Out of the 200 or so wounded, he helped to save that fateful day from those who survived and returned home to have children and grandchildren think of how many people are living today as a result of one man's selfless act of valour. Richard George Masters VC, I salute you. Britain's premier award for gallantry in the face of the enemy and is worn before all other orders, decorations and medals. In over 160 years, the medal has been awarded to 1,355 individual recipients, of which George is one, making him one of the Army's brave elite. Secondly, he was unique. During World War I, Private Master served in the Army Service Corps, which was charged with Army, with Army transport and supply, making it an antecedent of today's Royal Logistic Corps. George Master's Victoria Cross was the only one awarded to a member of the Army Service Corps during the First World War, and this in itself makes George Master's unique. Further to this, Private Master's is only one of five recipients of the Victoria Cross who served within the current Corps and its forebears. When you consider the hundreds of thousands of officers and soldiers who have served within the ranks through numerous wars and conflicts down the years, to be one of five is simply exceptional. Thirdly, he was a true hero. For I think the expression is that private masters had fall on the bravery front. For the Victoria Cross was not the first time that he'd been awarded a gallant. He was already a recipient of the French military honour, the Coup de Guerre, for valour won during an action in March 1917. I feel it's appropriate to share his short citation with you. On the morning of the 17th of March 1917, after a bombing raid on the Somme, Private R.G. Masters volunteered to go forward with a motor ambulance to advance dressing station, which is located in a small quarry just behind the front line. The trip was a hazardous one, being under shell fire all of the time. Masters made a total of four journeys, clearing all of the wounded, from the dressing station and for his actions was worthy of national recognition. Park Masters was presented with his award on the steps of Southport Town Hall a hundred years ago this last January. 
Indeed, we are delighted to have with us here today a representative of the French Armed Forces to commemorate this anniversary with us. His presence demonstrates the depth of feeling that the French nation holds for heroes of the First World War, such as Private George Masters. And finally, we have an affinity with him because ultimately he was one of us. A local man, a man born in Birkdale, a quiet man, a man in his early 40s, said to be thoughtful, resourceful and reliable by his colleagues. He had a strong sense of duty and, as demonstrated by his actions, was highly determined and possessed immense courage. Whilst I have no reservation in calling him a true hero, I have no doubt whatsoever that he would disagree with my assertions with characteristic humility. It is said that when he was lauded for his actions, he would simply smile and say, it was all in a day's work for the moment. Like many servicemen, he would consider himself to be an ordinary soldier merely doing his job. The nature of the army is that it inspires ordinary people to perform extraordinary, and in the case of private masters, exceptional acts. It is clear that his military service brought out the best in his character. War was an environment in which he thrived. Private Master's values are no different to that of soldiers serving today a century later. Possessing self-discipline to conquer his fears that no doubt he would have experienced time and again. Selfless commitment to the job in hand, in his case saving lives. He displayed consummate professionalism, no matter the circumstances, stepping up to the plate when there's a job to be done. And finally, courage. But not the adrenaline fueled seething rage required to assault or defend a trench, but the cool, calm and calculated courage to run the gauntlet time after time against the odds. So this is why we, as soldiers within the regiment, hold private masters in such high regard. Because despite the generations between us, we are kindred spirits. Drawn by service, tempered by conflict, and whilst being ordinary ourselves, aspire to achieve extraordinary deeds like our forebear, George. An enemy, an enemy attack, communications were cut off and the wounded could not be evacuated. The road was reported impassable, but private masters volunteered to try and get through. And after the greatest difficulty, he succeeded. Although he had to clear the road of all sorts of debris, he made journey after journey throughout the afternoon over a road consistently shelled and swept by machine gun fire, and was, on one occasion, bombed by an aeroplane. The greater part of the wounded cleared from this area were evacuated by private masters, as his was the only car that got through during this particular time.
pray asking God's blessing on this memorial stone, dedicated in memory and thanksgiving to Private Richard George Masters, V.C. God our Father, the loving care your hand has created us, and as the potter fashions the clay, you have formed us in your image through the Holy Spirit, who breathed into us the gift of life. thanks for his accomplishments and his commitment to the task in hand. May this memorial placed in his honour be a constant reminder of all these things. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lieutenant of Merseyside, Mr. Mark Blundell. The Worshipful, the Mayor of Sefton, Councillor Dave Robinson. Six Regiment Royal Logistic Corps.
Mr. Paul Grice, the great great nephew of Private Masters. Any other person or organisation wishing to lay a wreath can do so now. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the service for this morning. If everyone can please stay in position for the moment while the civic party makes their way to the salute and dais and then the parade will set off shortly afterwards. Following this event, at the 238 Squadron Barracks, there will be an open day from 1 till 5 p.m. if anyone wishes to go, where the Mayor of Sefton will be unveiling the road sign in memory of Private Masters. Thank you.